Hey guys and welcome back to our podcast. Today, Cammy and I are bringing you our last EP of our Black Lives Matter series. But before we get into this, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. The red button is down below, as you can see, it's really big. So press, we need your help. Like, comment, subscribe. But yes. Click it. Click it. But yeah, let's get into this. This is something I want to bring up, right? Like, you know, like George Floyd's passing, that was tragic. Um, and I honestly thought we would kind of improve um, and not see other examples of similar incidents or the same instance. Um, but I feel like it's just getting worse. Like, I don't know, like me scrolling through social media and just everything. I'm just seeing like videos popping up everywhere of incidents of police brutality, whether that's in America, here in the UK or wherever. Um, I don't know, like, wh what do you feel about that? Do you think it's getting worse or do you think it's just stayed the same? That's the thing. I think it's just stayed the same. And honestly, like, and, and this isn't me being pessimistic, but I didn't, I didn't believe that just because there was um, a mass protest around the world, yeah, mm. and, so, and rightly so, that there was going to be immediate change. Like, change genuinely takes a long time. It needs to be uh, a conscious effort and it mm. has to be it, it can't it's not just a collective thing you have to do it individualistically like you mm. as a person me as a person i have to i have to do all the digging i have to do all the searching i have to do all my all the questioning do you get what i'm saying i have to do all the learning and unlearning mm. and that boy that that takes a lifetime it's like people people are stuck in their beliefs it's like it's like it's like that saying you can't teach an old uh, a dog old, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some people are really stuck in their ways and have been stuck in their ways since they were children. You know, like you know those kids that that always have tantrums to get what they want, and they still be having tantrums as teenagers and as adults, as old people, as grandparents. They still be having tantrums to get what they want. People get stuck in their ways, and unless you you have like some sort of guidance and and like the the want to to want to like change or transform that. But it's interesting how you said. Um, do you think it's the same or has it gone worse? I feel it might seem it's it's it might seem to others that it's gotten worse because more and more people are clued on and they're like actually acknowledging, oh shit, this is a form of racism. This is a form of police brutality. Exactly. So when we see loads of that, we're like, oh my God, there's so much. But, you know, I feel like now more and more people have actually, like, uh, taken account of what's happening. Absolutely. I get that it's, you know, it can't happen over time, uh, overnight and stuff. But I just feel like, especially for authorities to just learn what they're doing is not, uh, it's very problematic. You're making escalations happen more i just for them i feel as the institution you should just you know it's a problem you need to make quick actions fair enough different compared to an individual where they've been that same person but as a collective institution as a collective company or whatever like i feel like you need to make quick change and start that what makes you think that there's been more escalation like it's just, and stuff. I don't know, I've just been seeing a lot of more videos of what's so happening. Do you think it could be just that, that, that it's just being filmed a lot more? Like yeah. it's still happening at, the, happening at yeah. the same rate, but it's just being filmed more. Yeah, I, I feel like that. Yeah, it's just being more filmed. And it's great, like, I mean, it's good to film because without filming, then you don't know the police or whoever, don't know what's happened or you know if you want to make a complaint about like, oh, where's your evidence so I get that you know the technology is great until and for us to like record everything you know about the little boy that that was um in his own house playing and the woman reported him with a toy gun with a toy gun that's not the first one though like here in the UK right yeah in London yeah 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 um, there was another one in America where they actually shot the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the one that you're speaking on in the UK, yeah, yeah like, they probably name? raided his house. Sorry? What was his name? No, oh, Tamir Rice, Tamir Rice. Yeah. 
it's just a lot. I don't know. I just, I just feel like with the institution, the police institution, I feel like they should just make quick effect. But I, I don't know. I'm not seeing any. They're like, oh yeah, we'll do workshops. We do training. How are you training to treat someone as a human being, please? No, listen. I was watching the, this new Netflix series. I think it's called Immigration. Mm. And they they were showing us in one of the episodes the police training that they get. Wow, like you can't. I couldn't help but get emotional watching this because it's really like you don't you don't see them as another person. You literally, obviously, they're coming from a place like I need to defend myself. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I'm trying to prevent everything and anything. Um, from harming me which I also get you know like things can happen like this you go like in a split second millisecond but the train that they get it's like you're not trying to de-escalate yeah you you're not trying to you're not trying to make like the, make the it training that they get volatile. As, the training that they get is if they're in war basically basically yeah no it's fucked it's really fucked and and the thing is like I didn't listen I, I, I must be ignorant I must be living in my own bubble because I didn't even know that Americans called people that are you know weren't born in the United States illegal aliens who calls what aliens you, the United States of America yeah people that were not born and raised in the in, in the United States of America who do not have citizenship they call them illegal aliens yeah that they're just i feel like pe- i think more and more people are just clocking that certain people or government or authorities they're just they're just to see us as like as nothing they just really feel like they have the power to disrespect us as if we're not humans and we're just like animals or whatever yeah it's just by seeing all these incidents uh committed by the police you wonder why, like, we just have a lack of trust <laughs> in them. Like, I kid you right. not, I was with one of my friends in the park, right? And the police, two police officers are walking past. And I kid you not, I was just like, not going to even look at them, not even say hello, da, 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 da. And then one guy's like, oh, you, you guys are right. And I, I just looked at him, like that. And then, oh. and then the friend was like, oh, yeah, we're good. Thank you. And I was just like, because I just, I just lost so much respect. Mm. I'm not like saying oh the police don't do great things or it's not like they have stopped many crimes they have um but I'm just saying I don't know it just gives a reflection mm. it just leaves us with the community yeah it just leaves us with like, am I actually safe like I could go to work one person I might walk a wrong road and someone be like oh you've never seen this person before the less report and then all of this instance you get it I hear you. This is what also concerns me, yeah, because, and I get what you're saying, because sometimes I look at police and I'm just like, yeah, no, nah, like, I'm even trying to say hi to you. Like, I, re- I reported um, something lost the other day, so I can claim insurance, yeah. Um, so I reported it, I stole them. And I, w- I didn't want to be seen going into the police station because I was like, listen, I feel like this is personal. <laughs> like, I don't want people seeing me go into the police station if I'm honest with you. I don't. I really, really don't. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be there. Like, mm. I, feel, I feel like it's almost unsafe for me yeah. to just go in there. Like, you just never know what's going to happen. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Anyway, my point is, I get that thought process of you, too many of you guys have fucked up and you're meant to be an ambassador of of leadership yeah but my concern then comes in as don't you think that what i personally feel like it's a mutual mutual thing between us, me as a citizen and that person as a police officer to learn from one another and to take it as a our responsibility to build that relationship because imagine there's bare of us that are like yeah fuck the police bro because like they're dickheads and like I ain't gonna say hi to you. Do you know how depressing that would be as a job? Like, mm-hmm. listen, I've, I'm currently the cleaner, yeah, in, a, mm-hmm. in two DPD centers. Do you know how, like, I think at the end of my first week, I was so like down because I thought I have never had a job where I've not been interacting with other people. All my jobs have always been like customer facing, you like, where I talk a lot with customers and it's dealing with customers. And the fact that, like, I think it was the first time that someone said, oh, that's a cleaner. 
and for, for some reason it just hit me and I was like raw what you see is like, that nothing else and that's you know so cool. like, this is my title now the cleaner and yeah. like at the beginning because I felt because one of like the the rules is like obviously don't make conversation with them because they're there to work and I'm there to do my job and bounce you know it's like because I, I've never had to do that it was really almost a little bit traumatizing to for me to not have conversations with people for eight hours straight um mm-hmm. for me to not be like hey how are you like how's the day but you know, like chatty chatty um and, and for me to not have that interaction with other people it was really like overwhelming so I can imagine what it could be like in a in a in a field like being a police officer where it's just like raw people people don't like me you know and it's mm-hmm. even harder to build that community and especially together. for those who are who are not like certain individuals who are not racist or in this white supremacist framework who are want to make a change and their institutions labeled as racist and it's just like especially if you're uh, a police officer who's black or Asian or any other race mm. because then your own community will be like oh why is why is why is uncle a, a police officer like, oh, he's letting our community down and it's just a lot of meanings and a lot like it's just not nice yeah no it's like when I was seeing this immigration um, guys if you haven't watched this absolutely watch this maybe not at night like me because I was crying a lot but it's a really really interesting documentary a really mm. good series the majority of the of the people that were out on the streets making the arrests and um, like being the middleman of transitioning like from the arrest to the, the actual court were, were Latin American or Hispanic. Mm. Hello Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, uh, people from Guatemala, like just bare Latinos. And it's just like raw. Even one of them was like, say, was saying, mm. oh, um, I know what it's like. For, for, a, for a family member to be deported back. So it's like, so why are you doing this then? Um, but I guess it's all about survival and just having a living really, whatever that job may be. That's the thing. But that's the thing. This is, th- and they talk about this in the, in the documentary. They say, they say oh, um, you feel like, obviously you have to do a job that's going to pay you, it's going to look after you and your family, right? But then mm-hmm. your one job, is really building a whole empire, a whole um, foundation and constitution of racism. And mm. it's like, you do it because you have to do it, right? But you don't take... It's kind of like, you know this um, Sideman? What's his name? David something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know his full name, but Sideman, yeah. He, obviously, he, he knows that he doesn't want to be affiliated with this, with this organization. And mm. he took he took it as his own responsibility to be like, you listen, BBC, like, I can't be affiliated with you after you've just blatantly said the N-word and, and you haven't apologised. At that time, they hadn't apologised and they had mm. literally justified it even. Like, yeah, yeah. he said this. Yeah. Do, do you know what they said? They said, I got, I got it, I got the comment. They said, and it took them, how many days do you, do you know, do you, it took them four I to... I don't know how many. Twelve days. So... Oh, um, no, 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 12 days to apologise. The, ju- the justification was like a day or two days after. Okay. But it's to apologise for the incident, 12 days. Right, right, waiting for 12 days. And that was done by the executive or senior or general executive person. So they said in this, so basically the, um, the whole context was uh, the BBC did a report, a package um, of a racial... A racial attack that happened to a black boy in Bristol. I think it was Bristol. Um, they hit him in the car, hit him with their car, right? Oh. So um, obviously the BBC reported this, and you know the reporter talked to the the victim, and then out of nowhere, she says ten words, um, and basically they said the reason for this. So the comment was, um, in this specific context, we felt the need to explain and report not just the injuries, but given their alleged extreme nature, the words alleged to have been used, a position which, as we have said, was supported by the family and victim. These are difficult judgments, but the context is very important in this particular case. We we believe we gave adequate warnings that upsetting images and language would be used, and we will continue to pursue this story. They were just justifying their point, saying, oh, yeah, we, we... 
we felt we needed to use it like it just gave a reflection also like the family and the victim gave us the the authority to use that word what do you think about that do you think the family were in the wrong for giving bbc permission and two do you think that this is a pressing enough issue for people to be like listen fuck my ambition for money fuck the fact that i need to feed my family fuck all of that stuff we need to go on a ban now like it's gotten to the point where we need to take serious action kind of like um the dalai lama going on a hunger strike for how many days lots Mm. and lots of days Mm. yeah so in terms of the family i feel like in that situation they were just thinking about obviously the situation that the individual was involved in so i get why they would say oh yeah you can use it but at the same time i just don't think they was thinking beyond that like the kind of detrimental effect that can have for the bbc and also for others Mm -hmm. i think they were just thinking in the context of we want this report out we want people to know that this is not on um but at the same time i personally would not say oh yeah go ahead use the n-word because you're given the green light for people to use that right you know what i mean Absolutely. and loads of people look up to the, you know these people and say oh you know they just said it why can i say it you know in terms of the um, people who work for the bbc um black people and other people of, like people of color who work for the bbc like that'd be great if they had like a strike just a day off you know and not They'd, even just black and people of color everybody yeah yeah, yeah. and n- workers did say that they people did say who worked for the bbc said like both white and black and other people like are just general people were not happy and they felt ashamed um to be oh. in that environment it just shows the lack of representation in your the 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 person the who did the work in that department like right it does me i'd be like i'm sorry no that's not gonna happen and i stand by that but like, no i don't give, you're not using that word yeah no what the fuck yeah so like i want to bring to you um how do you feel about wiley that situation there what he said uh I think some really outlandish stuff mm-hmm. and i don't agree with what he said mm-hmm. um i also don't think it's anything new mm-hmm. but because he did literally attach it to the jewish community mm. it's anti-semitic yeah and i don't agree with it mm-hmm. i also don't agree with how he was basically banned from every platform yeah and i think it's, it's, it's i would say it's a disgrace the fact that this man although he's always been a little bit like uh, let me say like a little bit unhinged <laughs> it hasn't it hasn't it, that's not always been the case compared to let's say other people mm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that we were talking about this earlier mm. And Key Hopkins has been doing this for well over a decade. And they've only just recently removed her. Yeah, just just from Twitter though. Like she's on she has her own she's on YouTube. So nice. Like yeah, um I I guess I like, I see people's frustration and you know, like when his tweets came out, everybody was just like, fuck, like nah, this guy's out. Huh? I didn't even see all the tweets. They were removed by the time I got yeah. on my phone. Should I say, should I say one? He said, he yeah. said, um, so yeah, yeah. So he, he was basically banned from his management company, which I was like, whoa, management. They stripped and everything. And they, I think he has a MBE as well. They, they want to take, you know, he was like, I never had that MBA anyway. <laughs> yeah. He was in his managers. I think it was his managers. Yeah, yeah. So basically, one of the t- uh, tweets that he made, he said, there are two sets of people who nobody has really wanted to challenge, Jewish and KKK, but being in business for 20 years, you start to understand why. Um, I would challenge the whole world of Jewish community on my own. I'm not scared. I can handle them. <laughs> you can't be making wild statements like that. You really cannot. And also, you can't be shocked if you're going to be taken off everything, you know what I mean, when you make comments like that. And the thing is, I think he just had, he only had a problem with his manager. I mm, think, I think mm, his, his intention was to be so outlandish that he doesn't have to work with his manager anymore. 
I don't think it's a personal. Well, it, it got him the thing because he's been taken off like by his management company. So I guess it's worked for him. I don't think it's a personal problem with the whole community. Hmm. Yeah, I just feel like how he was taken off, he was banned. Like, where was the energy for for Hopkins, Kate Hopkins, or Tommy Robinson? Like, I can't she- lie though. I think uh, this is okay. The fact that he was used as an example, like uh, not as an example, as like the like action was taken against him. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I would say it's a good thing. What mm. what I what I'm agreeing with you is, I think it's disgusting that that. It just so happened to be Wiley. And it just so happened to be that he said something anti-Semitic. As he said, as an example, like, Wiley is an example as a black man to be banned. It's just like, okay, but there's other people who've been racist and it's only taking you now to remove an individual from Twitter. Why? Why? What was the... And her comments were like, everyone, everyone, this woman will have something to say. She said something about... Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. movement. She said some. She said many things um, about the Muslim community, and she's called like refugees, cockroaches, and all this stuff. Like even with like Wiley, they mm-hmm. they didn't just ban him straight away. You know what I mean? Like yeah, look what he was saying. They they when the, when it was active, they were letting mm-hmm. him tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet. And then as soon as he calmed, he like he stopped and calmed down. Yeah, I think it. You know that comment there. It just looks really, really bad when you're put in a community next to a white supremacist uh, group. It just doesn't look well in a sentence. I mean, that's what people flipped out. It's like you're you're basically comparing or putting similarities between the Jewish community and the KKK. That just looks really bad. It's true. It doesn't look great. So I get why people like. You know, that. yeah, but I, I don't know. Like, I just feel like we need to proper, proper regulate and take people off. But there will come an excuse. Oh, we don't have time in the day. We don't have people to pay to take this off. Oh, if we take down a site, another one come back on. Okay, cool. We know that you block a site, someone else will put hate comments or whatever. But I don't yeah, get that. They, they weren't blocking him when he was like saying stuff. They only blocked him when he calmed down. So when Twitter was popping, you know, and Twitter was getting a lot of, like, media yeah. attention, he was... That's when, and that's the thing, like, people only do it, for example, the BBC as well, when someone has left or they've got so much attention on them. They just do something. But it's the fact that you should do it straight away when you see something happens. Oh, there's someone I need to bring up with you. Oh, my day. So when, basically, they did the report of um, Wiley's anti-Semitic, like... Uh, tweets right mm. um a guardian um journalist basically wrote it and about it and everything but then um when he finished it um and it was like let's say scheduled for the next morning they used an image of kano instead of wiley and it's just like not every black person looks the same and this is not the first incident right this has happened in where um celebrity i think it's celebrity got box and Mo the comedian was on it and they used someone else's complete different name I saw. it's just like do all black people look the same i'm so sorry like wh- why is it hard you just type in why into google google you just type in google and it gives you the image how do you get to kano please and then the journalist himself was just like i do apologize it, you know i i just want to say that i didn't i did not you uh suggest this photo because certain journalists don't have a say or it's different right. rights but they have a separate someone to put the photos on. Mm-hmm. It's like that person there, like, do you, it's really not that hard. Go on to Google. Different names, different artists. I wonder how he came up with that picture then. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm he confused. was drunk or tired. I don't know. Or on drugs. I just oh, typed in black right? rapper. Who knows? I don't know. He must have been, he must have been sh- like stupid tired because for you to get the image, I don't know how it works in journalism. Like I, I don't under, I don't know how it works as a research. You literally type it. in an uh, image into Google. Right, right, right. And, and then, why and then why so know why come out, G? How did you go from Wiley to Kano? It's different letters. It's so detrimental. Or, or yeah, it's it could have been very bad. So Kano was not happy because it's like I don't agree with what Wiley has said, and then you've attached me to that. Like right. 
So Wild. again, like this needs to stop. I don't think you should have done the second report with Sky News. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just like, and it doesn't help. It makes this. Oh. So he doesn't have management now. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because that that Sky News report was stupid. That Sky interview was stupid. Yeah, and then he had to go at the reporter saying, oh, he's making me seem this and this and that. It's just like, some of these publications just don't go, just don't be willing to speak up in these things. Not in Wiley's situation, but I just mean in general. They have don't have your intentions at heart. Mm-hmm. Some so turn up. down the bag. Some, some of them are so dodgy. Like, So Raheem Sterling has a tattoo of a gun on his leg, right? So he said, when I was two, my father died from being gunned down to death. I made a promise to myself I would never touch a gun in my lifetime. I shoot with my right foot, so it has a deeper meaning and still unfinished. So when he released that statement, Sky News used that, but then said, you know when he said, I will never touch a gun in my lifetime, they said, I will never touch a gun in my lifetime again. And they thought that no one would clock it, and it was just like, why are you why are you doing this like you think you're so smart painting a negative view of Raheem Sterling as if he, he was part of a gang in the past or he's done this and that I just feel we've got a lot to do with as a community as a world we just got a lot a lot to sort and as you said this is not a thing that's just gonna happen overnight people Again, can't even sort out their relationships with their parents Kia so how are they going to slap it? Oh, people like... don't even speak to their siblings. You know, they're full blood yeah. siblings that they, they chill with in their crib. I know. So it's like, how are we going to... I think it's just, it's just a humanity issue. Like, we just don't communicate and not willing to listen because it's like, who's right, who's wrong? All of this nonsense. We can all have conversations and all of... Yeah, we come up... It's such a positive conversation, you know, but it's like... We, I want this to be reached out and understood by ignorant people and racist individuals for them to clock. Mm. You need to stop. You need to stop it. But as I said, you know, they'll have hateful minds and they'll, you know, hateful energy. What goes wrong comes wrong. That's what I believe. What goes wrong comes wrong. I'm feeling sorry for them because they, they must be, they must have gone through some, something or they must be they must have gone through it or they're going through something that makes them so bitter and angry and hate it's bitter them. and they will be bitter until they die like i just need positive vibes you know one thing i do want to say i think i think sometimes yeah we stretch this whole positive vibes thing mm. and it can almost be detrimental and i don't want anyone to feel like they have to be positive all the effing time like sis, if you want to grow sis if you want to feel down and cry Cry. So one thing I'm really taking from this conversation is that it's a constant, constant journey. It starts with me. Mm-hmm. It starts with having these conversations and having integrity with my actions. Mm-hmm. Having integrity with who I choose to be, who I want to be and who I choose to be, being aligned together and obviously taking actions that are aligned with who I who I want to be and who I'm choosing to be. Yes. Um, having said that, um, I think that is a wrap. I think we're done here. But yeah, as I said, like it's been very productive in terms of having the, these discussions. I don't know if you feel the same, Cami, but I'm just glad I'm, I have like a space where I can just say how I feel and bring people into this. Not a lot of people have access to that information, especially if you hang out or you surround your circle with a certain type of people, you might not hear views of others. I'm so happy to be able to have these sorts of conversations because if you don't have these conversations, you get stuck with all the questions. Mm, is that is very true, yeah. You know? And people, sometimes people don't even want to learn because they, they feel like they can't ask the questions that they want to ask mm-hmm. and they can't have the conversations mm-hmm. that they want to have. You know, so they're like, fuck it, like, why should I bother? Or they'll just stay stuck with their own opinions and judgment, you know? Mm. And it just doesn't move us forward in any way, shape or form. So, with that, I think uh, it's a wrap. Mm. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I've learned so much. Honestly, I've learned so 
much and I've absolutely loved all the recommendations and all the suggestions all the advice mm -hmm. um, that everyone has given mm -hmm. don't forget to subscribe guys yeah. don't forget to like this video we need your yeah. support subscribe like and comment please yes yeah. we need your support we want your support um, we want to know what people want to hear about we kind of want to talk about like relationships and stuff yeah, yeah that's our next one relationship guys maybe, maybe comment down below if you're yeah exactly. in what, what you want in there as well yeah. but until next time guys thank you for watching bye